Hello. So uh, I'm Evelyn, and one question that I consistently get asked is how I make my guacamole. So I thought it'd be easiest just to make a video how to do it so I can direct people to the video instead of having to write out the recipe every single time. So we'll get started. So the most important thing when making guacamole is to get your avocados. So you want to make sure that they're nice and dark and also when you touch them they have a little bit of give. Not too much, but you know, not too little. If they're really hard that means they're under ripe. So you know, just leave them out on your table and they'll eventually get ripe. Uh, don't put them in the fridge because then they will never ever ripe and they'll stay rock solid, so that's an important thing. So my guacamole is very easy. I only have a couple of ingredients. Those include the avocados, uh, cilantro, feta cheese, which is the secret ingredient I guess you could say, a red onion, and lime. And that's it. And that's all you really need to make really delicious guacamole. So don't be putting in mayo or sour cream or anything creepy like that because you won't make anything good. If you're feeling cheap and you want to make it go a little further, what I do is I add tomatoes and that usually works out well and it doesn't add anything weird to it. So we will start. So first I'll take my red onion and I'm going to make about enough guacamole for about three to four people. So I'm using four avocados. And I don't really have a recipe so that's why it's kind of difficult for me when people ask me how I make it, how to explain how I make my guacamole. So. I'll just do this, it's easier to show. So I took about um, a third of an onion. I'm just gonna chop that up into quite small pieces. I find this is the easiest way. I do everything by eye, I can see even right now with the amount of onion I have that this will probably actually be good. I might not even need the rest of this onion, so if you want to save it for stir fry or fajita or for later, that's fine. So I'm just going to put that aside and then, oh, stir fry here. <laughs> and then just kind of give it another chop so it's nice and nice and fine. And you can always go back and add more onion. You can't take onion away. So I always try to be kind of frugal with the onion at first. So that is good. Then I'll add it to my bowl. So you can see how much onion's in there. I would say it's probably uh, about half a cup for how much I'm making. And I'm taking my secret ingredient, which is what makes my guacamole different from anybody else's. And I'm using full fat feta, and I'm using domestic feta, which means it's Canadian. So it's not, I find it's less salty than the other kinds, if you use Greek feta. So this is a very important part about making my guacamole. It's the part you do not want to skip out on. This is what makes it special and what makes it different from the other kinds I make. Then I just chop it up like this. to see how big the pieces are. Not too big, not too little. And I'll put them into my bowl. And one thing I've noticed when I make this guacamole is that I seem to always have about the same amount of onions, the same amount of feta, the same amount of uh, cilantro. So it's kind of the important thing, the ratios that are important. Can you see? So that's how much I have. And then take my cilantro. So I like a lot of it. Some people don't like cilantro, so I guess you could leave it out, but it's not anywhere near the same. It's vital to the guacamole. So I just take it, just chop it up. 
And see, I took about a hand handful because I like a lot of cilantro in my guacamole. big leaves in there. I just be able to spread it all out throughout the guacamole. Okay, so that's good. So I'll put that in the bowl. So again, like I said, we have equal parts of the onion and equal parts of the feta cheese. That seems to be the rough outline that I seem to use. So then we have that, and I just spread it around. So it's nice and mixed up before I add the avocados. So I might actually add some onion later on, but I'll see first how everything goes, how it looks like with the avocado. Okay, so I'll get my avocado and just cut it around like this. And it should come out pretty easy. This one's a really good one. So today I used organic ones because I find that usually they're the ones that are the ripest when I go to the store. I find that the just the normal ones are usually really underripe. But if you want to use the other kind, that's okay because they are cheaper. And then you take your spoon. So I just cut little cross sections like that. And you just take your spoon and you scoop it out. It's very easy. See, it comes out nice and easy. Really good. So, um, if you are making Mexican style guacamole, not the kind that we make in my family, you will see that they add jalapeno peppers and garlic and all that kind of stuff. And if you want to do that, that's fine. I find that garlic is too overpowering for the avocados and that uh, takes over the flavor. So, again, I did the cross sections and I just scoop it into here. So, if you can see, it's really nice and soft. They're not hard at all, so that's why I got these ones. I just take the pith out, I just do that, it out like that. It doesn't even matter if you don't do the cross sections. It's not the end of the world, the nice and mushy doesn't matter. So we'll have our last one. So this is going to be quite a bit. Again, it's a really nice one. This isn't taking very long, it's not anything too labor intensive, and it's much better than anything you will ever buy or get. No avocado powder here. So what I like to do is I like to mush it up before I add the lime. So if you want to come closer, I can show you. So I do not mush it up. You don't want it to be smooth. That's... Oops. You want it to be really rough, so don't put it in a food processor or in a blender, just use your fork. If the avocados are ripe, it's not going to be difficult at all. So just kind of mix everything together, mush it all up. Again, you can see kind of the texture of going form. I'm already starting to get there. Oh, all right. So I just find that when I mushed it up, when I mushed it up first, it's much easier when I add the lime to kind of mix it all through. So um, first I will start with one lime. I like to kind of press into the lime, it makes it easier to squeeze. And just squeeze it in there. So um, my sister and I, we like our guacamole extremely limey, so we usually add more than really needs it. So I'll add one for now. This probably actually could be enough for, because I only have three avocados. It's a pretty juicy lime, so it might be good. Let's get some salt. So you can 
can see all the lime on the top and then you'll see how easy it is to incorporate it throughout the whole thing and then it also helps you know mush it up a little a little more but you don't really want it any more mushed up than this it's really important that it's still pretty chunky and that it's not completely smooth you still want to be able to tell that it's real avocados in there that looks really good looks like I used about the right amount okay, so I'm just gonna take some salt Soak that up. Again, this is a time where you're going to want to start tasting it as you go. So I'm just going to use right now some Melba toast that I have. It's just pretty plain, but it'll help me taste it. Just to see if I need more lime or if I need more salt or cilantro or anything like that. It's not anything exact. That's the point of this, so don't worry about following anything perfect. I'm gonna put half a lime in there. Another half. Also, one thing I find is the longer you let it sit, the more the lime flavor goes through. So it tastes saltier as it goes, it seems. Put another half in there. It's good. Another salt. So you can see the piece of feta cheese in there and it just completely you don't even know what's there but it adds to it let's try mm. mm -hmm. little salt also a little stir if you want to make it look nice just some cilantro, put it in the middle. If you want, you can sprinkle some feta cheese, some extra feta cheese on the top. Extra little thing you can do. Just take a paper towel and just go along the edges of the bowl so it doesn't look like a big mess. And you squeeze some lemon on the top so it doesn't turn brown. And that's it. So this is great with nachos, on enchiladas, on pizza, on pretty much anything. Just eating with a spoon is pretty good. <laughs> and just my rules are just to keep it really nice and simple. If you follow like this, then you can start adding other things like jalapenos and garlic. And tomatoes is good in here. But this is the most simple way. This is the way I make it whenever I go out. So if you ever eat my guacamole and you're curious about how you make it, uh, I can just direct you to this video. So there we go. So long.